All right, what's up, Locker Nuts? Are you ready to do some unboxing? Okay, we're gonna go through this van in just a second, and uh, this is all the good stuff, and I say all the good stuff because there wasn't really that much good stuff in this locker that I paid a whopping $8,000 for. Okay, we did find some really, really good stuff right in the front. The whole middle was like, eh. And then in the back, or closer to the back, we did find some interesting stuff which I put aside because I was rushed. I had to get to the dump, and I was trying to go through the stuff to give to a buddy of mine who I was giving him stuff to take to the flea market all right just to help him out but the good stuff we put in the van I showed you a little sneak peek at the end of the last video if you didn't watch that video go back and watch it it was kind of a whirlwind but we did go through it it's amazing how much stuff I went through and how little little good stuff there was but what's in the van there's some promise there's some hope and I know you guys wanted to go through it with me so how about we get started All right, let's get in this thing. All right, it, you know, it's been sitting in here for close to two weeks. And yeah, that's a, that's, that's a long time. But it's, hey, you know what, it's dry. It's been raining, but it stayed dry and it's safe and secure. So yeah, let's go through it. All right, we got this thing here. This right here, uh, this is a tote from a different locker, but you see I put some of the stuff in there, some of the stuff we already looked at. Um, but yeah, put some of the goodies in there. Oh yeah, of course you see my flat bed, you see my dolly there and my table. Back here, these uh, boxes, uh, we looked in that Stetson, but this other stuff here, yeah, 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 this is going to be fun. There's some good stuff, again, not that much stuff, right? Not that much stuff. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to drag this stuff in the house. We're going to go through it inside because it's wicked cold right now. Um, it's been really, really cold, but it is dry, all right? So I'm thankful for that, but it's been a little bit chilly. And of course, we're in Northern California. We're a little spoiled here with the weather. So by cold here, it's 30 40s at night not that cold for a lot of you guys are like well come on that's not that cold but for us it's cold so i'm gonna bring it in the house and we'll go through it in there okay all right we're in the house i'm laughing because if this looks familiar to you well you probably watch our live auctions we do a live auction from this very table this very place every monday night at 5 p.m pacific and then sometimes other nights too like tomorrow well it's not night but tomorrow saturday we're doing a pop-up auction at 10 a.m okay so wow this looks really interesting this box here let's go through it all right let's see what we got hmm huh. dave's board shop this is some vintage stickers here Local motion surfboards, Air Machi. Oh, Harley Davidson. That's good, right? Alerts. Pets live in this home. You know, let that one go. Hawaiian style. That's cool. Local motion. Eddie would go in memory of Eddie Aku. Aku. 2000 Quicksilver. So this is kind of neat. I mean, these things are vintage, most of them, right? That is, that's 21 years old, Timberline. So there's a market for vintage stickers, especially surfer stuff and motorcycle. No safety, no pain. No safety, no pain. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Ooh, Batman. Huh, that's kind of neat. Wow, oh, that's pretty... That's pretty cool. And the, the hood right here is like a silicone, very soft, pliable rubber. Can't imagine that's going to last like 50, 100 years. So, yeah, I don't know about collectability on this, but pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nice little action figure. A little bit of accessories there, right? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a Goofy, a Disney Goofy, but his face is all chewed up. I think this was used as a dog toy. Uh, here's, some, here's some little stones. All right, that's cool. And we found some other stones too in this locker. That's different, look at that. All right, we'll put those aside. We'll lock these stones up and sell those in the auction also. You guys will hear me talk a lot about the auction. That's because we sell a lot of this stuff that way. The other parts will go into our eBay store. The store name on that is Gato Deal. I'll put it on the screen so you can see it. Gato Deal. This is a Maestro right here, Volkswagen, 118th scale, pretty cool. It's got a little nick right there. It's a very dirty, maybe a little scuffed up, but still it's a, it's a die cast. Another die cast right here. Thunderbird, another Maestro. This one's a 125th scale. It's neat. Some brand new gloves right here. From Nordstrom. One size fits all. A little fuzzy gloves. I wonder if one of the, our girls would want that. Probably not. Uh oh. Hang on now. What do we got here? Got a signed ball. But the question is hmm, is this someone famous or is this someone's Little League team? You guys recognize any of these? This is cool. I've got a friend, Tickle Cat. 
that uh, is very good with the autograph. So I'm going to take some pics and send these to him and see what he says. I don't think these look like Little League signatures. This looks like something much better. Car the ball looks older. So hopefully that's something good. What do you guys think about that? Spalding. All right. That's a good find. Okay, we've got a little bit of money in. Okay, what's this? Nick Crop in. Certificate of Authenticity. Design was created using the ancient technique of reverse hand painting on the inside of mouth blown glass. Oh, oh, this is actually really nice. Mouth blown glass, huh? And that's painted on the inside. And it says Roadster Santa. And they're Santa in a Roadster. Hey, that's a good find right there, especially right now being set. It's not too far from Christmas right now. Christmas is next week. Hand Solo. 2001 Hot Wheels, it says. Police Hot Wheels. And it's a little mo motorcycle, metal motorcycle. Looks like it was displayed because it's pretty dusty. There's another one. Yeah. Trojans USC football. And a little Trojans, uh, whatever. What do you call this? Hello, hello. Whalers Locker Inc. Oh, Shark Tooth. Your lucky Shark Tooth. Guarantee. Oh, let's read this. What does this say? Anyone bitten or eaten alive by the razor sharp teeth of a man-eating shark while wearing a shark tooth purchased at Whaler's Locker, Lahaina, oh, yeah, will be given a full refund. That is hilarious. That's hilarious. All right, I love it. I don't $8,000 love it, but still, it's, it's kind of neat. Well, collectors, baseball, giants. What's this? Opening day, 2000. That's cool. That's actually really cool. Seashells, looks like some stones in there. All right, maybe we put that into a lot. I don't know. And I like this. Okay, look at this. Those are very cool. Okay, it's already been opened. Let's take that out. Look, oh man, that's neat. Look at that. Ooh, that's so cool. It's polished, that is beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so what's that, like a fossilized snail or something? Ammonoids, ammonoids, I think is how you pronounce it, I don't know. Bought at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. I've been there. That's cool. Okay, a little bit more rocks and crystal. Oh, is this crystal? No, it's glass, I think. This little rock right here. This is just a little nice little stone. What is this? It's, almost, it's translucent part of it. It's cool. Okay. Ooh, what's this? Oh, this is good. A little jewelry box. This opens up. What's in here? Oh, okay. Is this a little jewelry box? That's different. It's a drum, which is fitting. The guy had that set of drums. We'll still take a look at those drums, right? I'm gonna have to go down to my locker because that's where I stashed them. Uh-oh, what do we have here? <laughs> okay, this... Could this be gold? Could this be gold? Mm-hmm. There's a little whale carved out of something, bone or something. Oh, look at that, Van Halen. 1980. Van Halen Productions, made in the USA, 1980. That's pretty cool. That's neat. <laughs> it's definitely neat. Van Halen, come on. Who doesn't love Van Halen? All right, don't answer that. If you don't love Van Halen, don't answer that. I don't want to know. <laughs> oh, yes. Do you see that right there? 14 Carat Italy. This is some gold here, guys. This is some gold. If there's kinks in it, then it's just going to be, yeah, there's a pretty bad kink right there. That's kinky. Right. <laughs> it's, it is kinky, but not, that sounds wrong. But um, we'll weigh that up. That's just going to be scrap. Okay, that's going to be scrap. So butterfly, brooch. Definitely that looks old. Look at all this thing right here. Look at that. This little release right there is so cool. A little shell right there. Like it's been polished out in that little hole drilled knit for a pendant. Volkswagen key, that's a, that's a vintage key. Okay, that's good. Huff, H-U-F. Hmm. What's this? So it's just a weight. It looks almost like something was melted down. But there's, I think, is that some markings on there? Huh. I don't know what that is. That might just be some lead or something melted down, or it might be something. Could that be silver? I'm not sure. Let's take a magnet to it. Nope, magnet doesn't do it. That doesn't mean a whole lot, all right? It doesn't mean a whole lot. Ooh, this is old. Gruen. Yeah, that's cool. That's a nice looking watch. 
Ooh, what's this? A little cross? I don't see any markings on it. A little aluminum ring or something. All right, well, that was that. All right, that's, that was cool. What else we got in here? What does that say? Gavis, Sweden. I think this is a silver plate, though. I don't think that's a sterling silver. It doesn't sound like it. Um, EP, electro plate. Okay, so it's a silver plate. Not too impressed with that. What's this? This is a nice little box right here. Oops. Dang, that sucks. Glasses, but they got totally wrecked. Some vintage glasses. Bummer. Hmm. That's really too bad. These are very old. Riser, huh? Okay. Maybe there's still value there. I don't know. Liberty House. Okay, there's more jewelry here. Ah, yeah. All right. I did not look through this before, guys. I didn't. I just looked in the box. I looked in the box and said, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me put it aside. Um, this was a pendant, but the pin is broken right there. You can see that there used to be a pin on there. That is broken. I'm not sure there's really going to be any value there. Uh, here's a belt buckle. All right, with an A. Made in Italy. <laughs> That's what it says, made in Italy. All right, well, Alvin and the Chipmunks. I don't know. What's this, cufflink or something? Yeah. Is that what that is? Cufflinks? What the heck? That says 925 on it. It does not look like silver, but it's marked 925. Wow. Okay. That is, that makes that very interesting. Okay, we'll put that aside. That's a good. Another cufflink right here. Look at this one. 58, 1958. J&J. &J. There's the matching set right there. There's the matching set of these right here. Oh man, these are nice too. Look at the abalone shell in there. That's cool. A set of those. Registered pharmacist, a little pin. That is really cool too. Alright, that's a vintage pin. 1814 and 1914. Edsfold? What is this? Um, that looks like maybe it was a belt buckle too. 830S, what is that? 830S. Uh, that might be a lower grade silver, perhaps. I'm not sure. That could be. Damn, that's a good little box. Oh, look at this. Tie clip. Oh, this is some cool stuff. This one's heavily tarnished, but what does that say? I think that says 830 also. 830S. Then H on it. I'm gonna have to look that up and see what that 830S is. This is, this is interesting. Okay, we're finding a little bit of good stuff here. Yes, there's a Timex right there. That's a nice looking watch. Yeah, that's good. And last but not least, we got this little pendant right here. And that's a little scale. See that? That is really cool. It works. I'm looking for a mark on that. I'm not seeing it, but it potentially could be silver. I'm not seeing any markings. That's a neat, that's kind of a neat little piece though. All right, guys, that was good. Let me pack this up and see what else we can find. Oops, I completely overlooked this. What is this? How did I miss that? Oh, my goodness, guys. <laughs> How did I miss that? That's an 18 karat right there. Do you see that? 18 karat jabel. 18 karat jabel. Wish we had the stone to go on that, but yes, yeah, some more gold. Things are looking up. All right, a few more things in that box there. This is... It looks like glass or something. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Maybe it hangs on this. Maybe it's meant to be like a prism. I'm not sure what this is for. It's a little dirty. Um, I'm sure it was probably displayed somewhere. This also is displayed. It's signed by someone. Nancy Conkey or Conklin or something. Looks like a piece of driftwood that's been carved and painted. Kind of cool. And then this piece, uh, it's just a little bouquet of fake flowers there. Little miniature flowers. And uh, yeah. All right. Okay, guys, one of my favorite parts. Let's do a little gold land, shall we? Here's that 18 karat gold. 2.5, all right, 2.5 is 18 karat. So 18 karat, I think, is around $45 a gram scrap. I'm not positive. I think it's around $45. So there we got like 110 bucks right there. I'll take that. Then here's some 14 karat. Yeah, very light, 20 uh, 14 karat, I think, is $35 a gram. So you're looking at like 70 bucks there. So uh, right here, scrap gold, 185 bucks. I will. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. It's a nice surprise. Yeah. All right. Next, 
box here. That was a good start, right? That first box. Okay, so this one right here says uh, record albums. It is heavy. I think that is what it is, but obviously we didn't open. We didn't peek in this one. I just put it right in the car. All right, let's hope there's some good stuff. Ooh, I like this so far. This right here. They're in fact. Oh, yes. Ooh, this is good, guys. Ghost of the Machine, awesome album. I think that's the only police album that I ever owned back in the day was this one right here. Ooh, this is nice condition. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, it looks pretty good. It's a little dusty. I don't see any scratches, though. Oh, it's so good. Ooh, good start. All right, but I like to see those bags. Um, and surprisingly, I don't really see, I don't get collections in bags very often, like hardly ever. So good start, good start. Okay, ooh, what's this? UK, huh, UK. I don't know, who's that? I don't know. Robert Flip Exposure. All right. <laughs> We know the guy like Van Halen. We found quite a bit of Van Halen stuff already. Van Halen, fair warning. Wow, okay, that's good. Wait, let me look at the condition on that real quick. Mm, I'm not sure if this was the original sleeve. Ah, that looks good. This guy kept pretty good care of his stuff. I see a little bit of light scuffing, not, not any scratches, nothing that would affect play. That's good. King Crimson, three of a perfect pair. Not heard of that one either. Aerosmith, that's good. Get your wings. Oh man, Oingo Boingo, only a lad. This was my favorite group back in the day. Uh, I had all their albums. There's Danny Elfman. If you guys don't know who Oingo Boingo is, come on, what are you, in your 20s? I mean, come on. <laughs> but Danny Elfman, of course, y'all know his music even if you don't know his name, but I think most of you know his name. He's super well known from his days with Oingo Boingo, but of course went on to be a music composer, did the Simpsons theme song, but biggest, I think biggest uh, was Nightmare Before Christmas. He did the uh, music for that, and he was the voice of Jack, the, the singing voice of Jack, right? The speaking voice of Jack was a different actor, but the singing voice was Danny Elfman. And uh, man, what a career, uh, but kind of a jerk. <laughs> I met him once be after a live show, and uh, he was not that friendly. He was not the friendliest guy, and I think he has a, a uh, reputation for that, too, or at least he did back then. Um, not the most friendly guy, but total respect. He is uh, he is a real master of the, uh, of the art, really. Very accomplished. Bullet Boys. All right. All right, there's a... a Vargas uh, painting there, Vargas, but this is the Cars. There's Rick Ocasek, right? Uh, that's the Cars. That's a good album, too. John Lennon. John Lennon, Imagine. That's that's good. Get the neck. Babies on the Edge. Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick. Uh, the Early Beatles, 2002. This is a calendar. Huh, that's neat. Good stuff. It's in good condition. All right, here's the Beatles, the first album, okay? This is, uh, we've had this before. I love this in plastic. Ah, oh, yeah, David Bowie, we've had this too. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a good al album of his too. Modern Love, China Girl, that's a great album. This David Bowie here features Blue Jean, Cheap Trick. Look at this thing. A lot of these will go into our live auction also. Credence, Gold, The Cars. Oh, this is great stuff. But the good times rule or good times rule my best friend's girl just what i needed this is like hit song hit song hit song that's that, i like that credence gold this guy has good taste in music elvis's gold records all right looks like they didn't have the cover so it's just in a generic cover honky chateau elton john journey this is fantastic guys this really is journey date with elvis that's an older it's definitely older Oh man, the Pretenders. This is great stuff. I'm totally loving this guy's music. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Scorpions, come on. Toto, this guy's got like great stuff. Frank Zappa? <laughs> or Sheik, you're... you're <laughs> We've had this one before too. Sheik, 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 your booty? Love that guy's sense of humor, right? There's Frank Zappa, Joe's Garage, Zappa. Duran Duran. Look at that. <laughs> oh, this is the old one. Planet Earth Girls on f Film. Yeah, that's one of their first uh, breakout albums there. Missing Persons. 
The Colt. I saw the cassette uh, in his cassette collection from The Colt. I, I was almost always playing The Colt in my car when I was learning how to drive, so that I love seeing that. Duran Duran, big thing. Santa Esmeralda, persuasive percussion. Hmm, sounds like jazz to me. Yeah, maybe a jazz album. It's missing the cover, but it's got the sleeve. Oh, there's percussions classics. Pablo Cruz, Luke Sharp. Oh, Joe Jackson, nice. Oh, this is a good one too. Look at the Sunday papers. Is she really going out with him? Man, this is good stuff. Michael Schechner group. Do you guys like this, seeing the albums? I don't know, Robert Plant? I try to speed up as much as I can, Robert Plant. Rolling Stones, Tattoo You. That's a, such a great album cover, right? That the, the graphic design on that, awesome. Elton John, Honky Chateau, another one, another copy. David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust, oh wow. Hmm, I might just have to play that one. Yeah, the old David Bowie stuff is pretty good, pretty good, hmm. Might just have to put that on the record player and listen to it before we sell it. Foul Play, Rod Stewart, Rush, Power Windows, Mark Isham, Castalia, NXS, Shabu Shabu. Mm, that's a good one too. That's a little bit older for them. Hanoi Rocks. I don't know that. Ah, this one's all tore up. What is this? I don't know what this is. Do you guys know what this is? In the Court of the Crimson King. An observation by King Crimson. Cover is pretty beat up. That might be something special. Here's another King Crimson. Discipline. King Crimson. Oh, there it is there. Okay. Andre Volum Wider. Godspell. Weather Report. A couple from Weather Report. Music Box. Okay, I'm not as impressed with this stuff now. <laughs> Songs of Hawaii. Look at that. It's funny. French Touch. Boss Gags. All right. Hey, some Hawaiian music, that's cool. That's always good to put on in the background. Nice, mellow. Moon of Ma Manakura. Madam Butterfly. A little classical stuff. Blue Hawaii by Billy Vaughn. All right, this is some good stuff. This is good listening. All this stuff here, I think is easy. There's a Herb Alpert's Tijuana Brass. Had that quite a few times, that one also. Right, there's another Herb Alpert. Around the world in percussion. This is some good stuff. This was a great collection. Looks like condition's pretty decent too. Um, man, what do you think about value here, guys? That's easily a few hundred bucks. Easily a few hundred bucks. And if there's any real gems in there, that might be worth a little bit more. Uh, all right, this next box is this big old box of uh, office supplies and stuff. I don't know. I, I probably could have let this go, but I saw a couple things that caught my interest. This is one of them. This Koenur, 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 Repediograph. And I don't think I found these before, and I looked them up, and they actually do have some value. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Obviously, it's for drafting or art or something, but it looks like these are kind of depleted, though. I'm not sure. But this little guy right here has got some value. This right here sounds like it's got plenty. It sounds like it's full, actually. This uh, multi-purpose adhesive, the spray-on glue, basically. This stuff's fantastic. I love working with that stuff. And here's another one, spray mount. This looks like maybe it's an older bottle. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of pencils there. Look at this, workable fixative. It says prevent smudging. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's nice, this little pen holder, but uh, New Zealand, Kanuka, and it's got an artist mark on it. That's a nice little piece right there. Oh, it feels nice too. I'm gonna put that aside. There's a little bit of paper. <laughs> I don't know why that I think that's funny. It's just funny. Oh, okay, look at this. This is like bamboo or something, and got a whole bunch of brushes in here. I wonder if these, whoa, that's a $9 brush way back in the day. Gr Grumbucker, this is made in China, but that is a different brush right there. I've, I have a feeling maybe some of this, eh, that's nothing right there. This one might be something good. It says China, but it feels like a nicer brush. The bristles feel a little bit better. No, nah, not these ones though. These are Indonesia and they're used. But these ones look to be like a little bit better. I'll put those aside. Maybe we'll do like a big craft lot. And that's just some regular old pencils and pens. Nothing terribly interesting in there. There's a battery operated pencil sharpener. Batteries have popped, they're squeezing out. I'll, I'll let that go. Do you, ooh, look at these little trays. Some vintage stuff. Yeah, the Japan it says. I kind of feel like I found one of these before. I'm put that aside. Pentel, oil pastels. 
Oh, that's cool. Put that aside. Oh, what is this? Look at this thing. That's a little different. Why is there a pen to it? <laughs> uh, that's something different, isn't it? Look at it. I think you put the pen there. And whatever all this stuff does, you know, it's for drafting or something. Here's a very similar one here also. Okay, we'll put all that in a lot. We'll auction it off. What are these? Chart pack. It's a marker. Non-toxic. Warm gray. That doesn't look dried out, but I can't imagine there's much ink left in these things. That one's dry as a bone. I think this is going to be too old. This one's a little heavier. Nah, they're dried out though. These I think are going to have to get thrown away, unfortunately. What's this? Helix. Auto eraser, what the heck? Seriously? I think a battery goes in there. <laughs> That's funny. There's some real sponges right there. That's not an artificial sponge. What are these? They're, they're really heavy. I think this is Dacman. D-A-K-M-A-N-8. Dacman 8. Maybe they're just paperweights or something. Got a little funky stuff on there, but they're, they're very heavy. And I think this is suede. Okay, this is maybe something a little better. It looks expensive. Rotring, Rotring. What are these? It's missing something here. I think these are dried out, but um, I don't know. I just have a feeling these were more expensive. This is something that was a little bit pricey. Winston and Newton. Three tubes. What is this? Oh, some kind of ink. See that? All right, those aren't dried out. We'll put those aside. Oil pastels. Ooh, that's good. This stuff's really good. And I say good meaning I know I can sell this stuff. Some watercolors. Nothing too fancy there. Ooh, this is at the bottom. Planix. Tamaya Digital Planometer. Planometer. Hmm. Okay, what's this? Oh, this this looks expensive. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this thing. Planix 5, number 1779, Tamaya Company, made in Japan. And I don't know what this is. Plug that in and try it out. Interesting. That one's got me a little perplexed. And then the last thing in that box, uh, this, what is this for? Super sharp. Put a wine corks on either end. Both ends are really sharp. What's that for? I'm sure it's for something. Okay, next thing is this. I thought they were journals. I think we peeked in this when we're going through the stuff on site. I thought these looked like journals. No, this is a Bible right there. That says Bible. So, ooh, look at this. Local Union, 1890 to 1940, honor member. Oh, wow. Something Anderson. Interesting, that's a very old Union pen. That's got to have some value, I would think. And look at this, I got a couple more pens in here. And something else that's completely deteriorated, like it's gone. Maybe like it's just shrapnel in there, like a ribbon or something. Okay, oh, look at this. USN. Oh, this is, this is really interesting right here. Oh, wow, look at this, you guys. This actually says Sterling. If it can focus right there, sterling, oh yeah, it says sterling right there, but it has a gold tone to it, so that's a silver uh, pin, but maybe with a gold plating on it. Man, that's so cool. That is a really neat find. Next up, look at this, another Union pin, 1940, again from Anderson right there. All right, it's got some markings right here, but nothing, no precious, it's not precious metal. Um, I think it says something Chicago, it's the company that makes this, I think. But there's another vintage Union pin, I think that's really cool too. Oh, and then, oh man, look at this, that little thread was still hanging on. This was the ribbon right here that is completely deteriorated. And look at that art exhibit, it's some kind of an award or something. Oh yeah, it says awarded to CAA. Oh, that's another Union, Painter's Union. Wow, that's nice. Okay, now this thing, this is really old. Look at that. Wow. It feels very fragile, <laughs> delicate. You see it's already ripping right here. It's coming apart. Let me try to be very gentle. NYE Testament, huh? 1864. Oh, wow. Okay, so it says London, but what? What language is this? What language is this? Can you guys see? Let me know if you know what language this is. 
Uh, very old, very old, little, little tiny Bible. Okay, that's a great find right there. I'm loving that. That is definitely something that we'll put in our live auction, right? And what's this right here? Even the uh, saran wrap is really, really old. Oh, man. This one's also deteriorating a little bit. I mean, just from age. You can see it's almost like staining this. It's like a little bit of dust, but holy Bible. You know, holy moly, this is old. <laughs> really, really old. I'm going to be real gentle with it. But we got to find the date. Oh, look at this. To Dorothy Anderson from Humboldt Park Community, M.E. Church, Confirmation Day, May 3rd, 1925. And it was, I can't read the name, but it says Pastor. This was given to this person by the pastor on their Confirmation Day. How exciting. Okay, this is, uh, this is 1925. So, um, surprisingly, it's not as old as the other one. The other, other one is older. It's still almost 100 years old right here, this Bible. I like that. We like finding Bibles. You know, we especially like finding old Bibles. Okay. Next box. All right, I forget why I put this one aside. It was still taped up a little bit. Oh, that's right. We peeked in this one. This one was tan zoos, I think. Let's see. No, this is not. This is something different. I think this is a turntable. Yes, this is a turntable. Let me try to get this out without spilling these popcorns everywhere. This is an old one. All right, let's see what we got here. Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's KLH. I think that's a pretty good brand. KLH. Made by Gerard Gerard for KLH. Um, this is a very old one. I don't think this is going to be like the ones that the collectors really want, but I might be wrong. I might be wrong. A whole schematic down here. I'm not sure why all that is missing the footer right here. Maybe that's in the box too. All right, right here it does say Model 24, so there's that clue right there. So, oh, it's got an FM tuner built in too. Okay, all right. Yeah, this is loose. All right, well, I just looked this uh, turntable up. Not a lot of value there, okay, which I know you guys know because I put the values on the screen. If the turntable's not worth too much, I take a closer look at these styluses. Sometimes these can be uh, as worth as much as the whole turntable. But this one has no needle on it, so this one needs a needle or a whole new stylus. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, no luck there either, unfortunately. All right, next box, next box. Okay, yeah, I remember this one now. Uh, garbage bags, all right, we'll just put that aside. We'll definitely use those. This we already looked at in the last episode, the Campanolo uh, biker's hat. This is vintage, and this might have a little bit of value. This Campanolo, Campanolo. Uh, this stuff seems to be extremely collectible and expensive, at least the bike parts that I found in the past. So I'll put that aside. That's a good find. It's got a little bit of dog, I think dog hair or something. I think you must have had a dog, some fine dog hair on stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we looked at this too. Hutch, rawhide, glove here. Yeah, I think that's, I don't know. It's got like little spots on it too. I don't think that's anything, but I'm going to put it aside. You guys let me know if you think that's worth something. I don't think it is. Oh yeah, then here we've got those rocks. Okay. So this one's kind of lost most of its lock rocks. They either came unglued or he took them off maybe to play with them or something. That one's intact. And that's kind of neat. This, uh, this appears to be older. Graham Rock Crafts. British Columbia. I think that's what it is. BC. Okay. Oh, look at this one. Mineral Specimens. Huh. That's cool. A few more pieces of rock here. They're come loose, all right? Yeah, we're just going to put all that together. We'll do a nice big lot in our live auction, and we'll sell those rocks there. Okay, yeah, we did already look at these briefly. Andorin. Oh, that's a Spider-Man. No, is that Spider-Man? Yeah. Very, very uh, <laughs> faded out. It's like it's been washed a bunch of times. Professional pharmacy, huh? Royals. Interesting. Plus, well, there's some vintage shirts there. Oh, bummer. Here's his diploma. California State Polytechnical University, it's Cal Poly in Pomona. I say bummer only because I would have gotten that back to the family when I returned all the photographs. Oh, yeah, there's that Bruce Lee folder. I peeked in this box, so I saw that already. 
old photograph here. It's kind of school photo. Oh, the Hawaiians. All right, so this guy must have grown up in Hawaii, maybe. Okay, that's interesting. Bruce Lee, Master of Martial Arts. And look at this. 1974 is the date on that folder right there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's neat. Space shuttle. Some vintage stuff here. Look at this. Shuttle Student Involvement Project. There's a poster. Let's see what kind of poster this is. Sid Vicious. Uh-huh. Sex Pistols. Mm, that's kind of neat. 1987. That's the date right here. 1987. All right, another vintage piece here. Wow, that's bright yellow. Buttons have quite a bit of wear on them. I like that. It gives it a, like a aged look. Russell, boys, small. And this is what? This is that pharmacy again. So I have a feeling the pharmacy sponsors some teams or something. Carwalk, Carwalkie, Carwalkie Pharmacy. And a little bit of tearing right here, unfortunately, around there. But this is a vintage piece. And look at this. Number one in 75. This is a 1975 uh, piece here, like a windbreaker by Russell Athletics, I think. That's pretty neat. Look at this. Old, old wallet. A little crispy in there. The plastic is a little brittle, but this is leather. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of neat. It's old. This is Schaefer's. Ooh. Yeah, it's something going on with the pin right there. Like mildew or something on it. Which is very, very unfortunate. Well, I'll wipe it down and see if I can get it. That might just come right off. Maybe it's just also a patina or something? I don't know. Schaefer's a couple old pens, fountain pens. This could be worth something. Oh, yeah, check this out. Okay, this is kind of neat. 1981 Pro Bowl in Hawaii NFL. Too bad they're all bent up right here, but that's the old pennant. Hula Bowl. All right. This has got to be late 70s, early 80s right there. That's my guess. Pittsburgh Steelers, yes. That's an oldie. Look at this, the Hawaiians. No date on that either. And Hawaii, University of Hawaii. Neat. Oh, yeah, and then look at this. This is what I saw when I said, okay, wait a second, we're taking this home and go through it slowly. This looks very interesting. Our Redeemer, and it's a lion. That's a very old shirt, but it's like, oh, look at this. Van Halen Tour. Oh, wow, 83. I think that's a custom job. It's, that is very neat. Somebody did that. Probably when they went to the concert, they made their own shirt. That's really cool. That's got some history to it. I like that. A little, little saying in a frame there. A little watercolor or something framed up. Actually looks a little bit older. This is winter. What's that say? Winter or something. Des Plaines River, 1920 to 1930. Could that be that old? I'm not sure. Okay, what else have we got in here? Now, this bottom of this thing looks really interesting. I see some good stuff in here. There's an old cal calculator. Math box, huh? Nova 650. That thing is ancient. Little shot glass. It's from Hamburg. Stego from Russ. Like a beanie baby. Like a Beanie Baby, not a Beanie Baby. Oh, look at this. A patch from the Winter Olympics in 1976. This has got some really cool stuff in here. Uh oh This is heavy. I think this is change. Ooh. Okay. Got some straight-up money in here. We found some money. Oh, yeah. Okay, Bank of England, one pound. Bank of Canada, two. Another one. I don't know what that one's for, but it's for a hundred or whatever it is. And then this one, that looks a little bit older. Ten. Cool. All right, ooh, more. Yeah. This almost looks like Monopoly money. This from India, ten. Another Bank of India, ten. Rupees, ten rupees. Another Bank of India, one rupee. And another one. Oh, yeah, look at this. <laughs> Got a lot of money in here. A couple of ball bearings there. I'm not sure why those are in there. <laughs> and these are little uh, shells, I think. Okay, and then... Oh, my goodness. What the heck? Look at this, you guys. That's a tooth. That's someone's tooth. That's the root. And there's their gold tooth. And you know what? There's some gold, guys. That is some straight-up gold right there. 
Probably shouldn't be handling that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go wash my hands after this, but that is, that's some gold right there. That's gonna be worth a little bit of money in scrap. Okay, there's a lot of coins here. It looks like it's all foreign coins. Uh, that one looks like it could have some silver, but um, I don't think there's any, very much silver here, if there's any silver here. Uh, this one maybe has got some silver, I'm not sure. But it's all foreign, so you know what we did that? We put that in a lot of foreign money <laughs> in the auction. That's how we'll do that. That's a nice little find, though. Okay, I just thought of something. Do you think that's the coin collection that the dad was talking about? <laughs> I don't think so. I really don't think so, but it's the only coins that we found so far, right? So, uh, this is very heavy. I think there's rocks in there, though. That's what it feels like, rocks. Uh, but it's heavy. Uh, let's look at that. It's a piece of wood. Very odd. Interesting. Okay. This are coins, right? That's that's coins. 1975 proof set. That's usually what that is. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. This is coins. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. That's cool. Not uh, silver, right? That would need to be 1964 or earlier to be 90% silver. I don't remember if these, these might have a little bit of silver in them. These would not be known as uh, silver coins. And uh, the little hinge knob's broken there, so it doesn't set proper. That's too bad. But anyways, uh, still, hey, found some coins. <laughs> these are not the coins you're looking for. These are not the coins you're looking for. I think this is rocks. Okay, yeah. All right, that's nice. Look at that, big old crystal. Cool. That guy was a collector. Oh man, that just broke right off right there. The guy was a collector. Oh, this is good. What's that little amethyst in there, I think? That's good. Good, good, good. Hmm, look at the little geode. Yeah, this is actually pretty good stuff right here, I think. A little arrowhead. What is this called? I forget. It's very heavy. I forget what that's called. There's a polish over here. It's pretty. Wow. Really pretty. Another polished one right here. That one's polished up. Nice. Couple more. Couple more. That's nice. A little geode piece here, I think that is a geode. I don't know. <laughs> the rubber bands are just, they're old and brutal. Oh, wow, look at this. A whole bunch of tiny polished stones. Look at that. Drop them. Little tiny polished ones. That's neat. And then what's this? Oh, look at that. It's cool. Alright, next, next, next. Let's see what else we got. It's a little... Uh, can in there, Battle Lines, Dinky Toys, Made in England, okay, interesting, alright, cool. Another toy right here, a little Buzz Lightyear, this looks like McDonald's, Burger King, it says Burger King, alright, nothing there. Oh, what's this? And this, huh, this looks interesting, oh, oh. Look at that. I think we got some gold. Got a little, little tiny flake of gold. I think that's what that is. Unless it's like fool's gold. Um, hmm. Looks like a little flake of gold, though. Yeah. What do you guys think? Is that a little flake of real gold right there? I wonder, wonder. Um, hmm. This looks like gold, too, but this is obviously a lot bigger piece. Ooh, there's something else in here. Uh oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Well, what we got here? What is this? Is could that be real? So we found that 18 karat gold band, and it used it used to have a stone in it of some sort. What if this is the stone? If this is the stone, that could very well be a diamond. That'd be a big diamond. But uh, if that went with the 18 karat gold band, then um, I don't know. That could. Jeez, okay. And then what's this? Pendant that? Man, if that's gold, that's 
some chunky chunky. It, it doesn't feel so heavy though. Let's see if the, what the magnet does. Okay, the magnet's picking up the... Wait, what? It looks like the magnet's... Is, I was thinking maybe it's picking up the little loop right here, but it's not. It's picking something up in the stem right here, unless that's like reinforced with something stronger because gold's not really that very strong. Huh. I'll have to test this with the acid and see what it comes up as. Um, and then I'll have to test this little diamond too. Hopefully that's a real diamond. Oh my goodness, if that's a real diamond. Yeah, we got a little bit of our investment back. That'll be nice. I'd say that'd be real nice. There's a vintage Honda key right there. That looks like the key I used to have for a uh, Civic that I used to own. And that would be the remote for an old alarm system. Pretty funny. I like this though. Pasadena Honda, a little vintage uh, keychain there for a Honda. Maybe I'll use it for my truck. All right, here's some drums. I mean, Hong Kong, uh, this is a pencil sharpener. See that? Funny, but it's got one of the drums broke off there. These little metal pencil sharpeners, sometimes they're, they're kind of collectible. Not super collectible, but a little bit. Duncan Professional, a little vintage yo-yo. Uh-oh, come on coin collection. <laughs> It's not too late to start. Let's go. How about some gold coins this time? Nope, but it's all tarnished. Green tarnishing. There must be copper in it or something. More foreign coins. Okay. And what else we got? Oh, 500. 500. What is it? 500. Oh, Banco de Mexico. 500 pesos. <laughs> okay, that's not worth very much. Still kind of cool, though. We'll add that to our... Uh, foreign coin and money lot there. A little vintage leather coin pouch. That's neat too. Yeah, that looks good. Ooh, that looks like a buck knife. No, it says Pakistan. A little cross. 1952. Arrowhead District Chicago Council Built Boy Scouts of America. Iwahikipi. There's another old coin here. Canada, one cent. Some kind of debate club award. Another Winter Olympic Games, this time from 1980. And this one, Montreal, 1976. These are some pretty dope patches. We've got some pins. 1993 Rose Bowl game Coca-Cola pins. Actually, these are from Super Bowl. Oh, wait, was it? Wait, what? Super Bowl 27. Super Bowl 27. Maybe those weren't to go with this. Nice. Suicide Child, what? Huh, look at that. <laughs> That's weird. How would you make that? What would that be used for? Maybe a bandit name or something. There's a little rock. I want a rock. Damn, more rock. Maybe. What's in here? Coin collection, perhaps? Yep, I'm not letting it go. I'm still holding on to hope. <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys understand that the uh, in the last episode, that thumbnail I used, that was really an attempt at humor. You know, I'll never financially recover from this. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, I spent $8,000 on this locker. We, it's not a total loss, you know, and even if it was, I mean, come on, it's $8,000. Yes, that's a lot of money, but no, that was not financially going to ruin me. That was an attempt at a joke. A lot of people are getting a lot of comments, a lot of like kind of mean comments about, oh, you clickbait, blah, 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 blah. It's like, come on, have a sense of humor here, please. Are you guys not familiar with that um, meme from the show The Tiger King? Uh, where the guy says, I'll never financially recover from this. It was, it was just meant to be funny. Um, but also as a play as to the, all the mean comments from the first episode, which are like, you deserve it. Oh, you've been doing so good. You're greedy. All this stuff. It's like, <laughs> I don't... People come and it's just weird. It's just some weird comments. So anyways, it was a stab at humor, but uh, yeah, some people didn't take it that way. I hope you guys understood that. I was not being serious. Uh, 15 cents here, US mints, I don't know. 1975, oh, what's the significance of that date? It wasn't his birth year. He was born before that. Oh, there's some pennies, whatever. All right, I'll oh, sketch this, that's not bad. Okay, nothing there. 1988, this year I graduated. Let's see what this Pakistan is. Just a little buck knife copycat made in Pakistan. It's kind of sharp, but it's not a quality blade. It's just all right. It ain't no buck. Yeah, what's this? Oh, hang on. <laughs> hang on, hang on. What do we got here? What do we got 
here. I don't know if that's gold. It's got some kind of an inscription in here. It's fairly worn. Um, worn to the point where I can't tell what it says anymore. It doesn't really look like writing. It looks more like a design. All right, but it did have something in there. It looks like it's pretty worn, worn down. I don't know if that's gold. It could definitely be gold. Let's put that aside. We're gonna test a couple of these things. All right, next box. Next box is this. Okay, so I we opened that in the locker, took this out, but didn't get it back fully in, so I just left it open. Okay, let's just take a look at it. So this is what was marked Tansu. Tansu. Nice little piece right here. I'm not real familiar with these. Oh yeah, that's right. This is the one that's got some stuff in it. That's either silver plate or silver. That's a good sign. <laughs> What's this? Fine jewelry. We like to see that. American Standard Bible. Let's see if there's any hundred dollar bills in there. Okay, there's the plastic piece that goes with that, I think. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is rosewood. This is rosewood, which is light and also I think very expensive. What's in here? This is very interesting. All right, some stamps, baseball sluggers, 39 centers though, so this, that doesn't cut it today. Um, postage can be added to it, but I wonder if this sheet right here is collectible. It could very well be. Mo American motorcycles, Indians, Harley Davidson, Cleveland. That is neat. So we got here four times five, there's 20 stamps there. $7.80 each sheet, so there's well, there's a little bit over 15 bucks in stamps. Oh, there's a little bit more. 50s sporting cars, sporty cars. Double-sided, nice. And there's another seven bucks there. Mm -hmm. Some chopsticks maybe? This is nice. Abalone shell or something, that inlay there. Very nice. Oh wow, that's some high quality chopsticks. <laughs> Very nice. Looks like it's brand new, potentially. Still got the paper tag around it. It's a Bakelite or something, I think. That is very interesting. I know the guy was uh, taking art class or something, learning how to watercolor, and that's what it looks like to me. A practice sheet. Now this piece right here, it has some value. I think those worth a couple hundred bucks each. I might be wrong. Let's look at this. All right, Harold, show us your pine jewelry. Oh. Reed and Barton, the card, Reed and Barton, Massachusetts. Oh, it plays raindrops keep falling on my head. Silver plate. Oh. That's kind of neat. Okay, next box. And this one also says Tansu, black, SWG. Tansu. This one looks a little bit better. Yeah, this one's different. It's got a hinge on top right here. This definitely looks, I don't know, it looks older. Let's see what we got. Okay. Uh oh. I see a coin here, guys. Could this be the coins? This is coins. Wait a second, I think I peeked in here and I just thought stamps. This is coins. The father said there was a coin collection in here. I've get oh I've uh, just about given up hope. Okay, so this is not like big big money stuff 2005, but they are proof sets. Okay, still better than better than some of the stuff we've been finding, right? This is good right here. 1964 Kennedy. That's a silver. Ooh, there's a Mercury dime. Looks like a 1938 business card for some Japanese antique dealer or Asian antiques. There's some more foreign coins, but I do see a little bit more uh, U.S. currency here. That's 1966 quarter. I think it's probably, uh, what's that? I think that's 40% silver or something like that. There's the Bicentennial, Kennedy. So there's a few things in there. Nothing too amazing either. It's a necklace. This is a good little box already. I don't see any silver marks on there. It might be a little bit of silver, but I don't see any markings. This was a Japanese sewing box, it says, right here. Oh, look at this. Japanese miniature helmet, Kabuto, of iron. Includes box platform. I don't think we've found the box platform. That helmet we sold on Monday in our live auction 
Um, too bad that we didn't have this to go with it. Give a little bit more information. That is a Japanese miniature home, right there. Kabuto. Japanese sewing box, $245. I think that's what this is here. So that's how much that was. Fumiki Tansu Warehouse. All right. Hey, look at this. A few little tiny stones in there. Millennium Gems, a third count, or third, uh, one third carat. This is what I'm talking about right here. Ooh. Whoa. Is this what the father was referring to? Coin collection. Are these, what are these? Okay guys, look at these coins. Are these just regular old coins that just were buried or something? I thought maybe that was a dime. I don't think that is. This is something much older, I think. I hope, I hope, I hope. What do you think? What do you think? From what you can see here, what do you think? Are these regular, no, these are not regular old coins. Look at the size of that. That is incredibly small. No, no, no modern coins that small, maybe foreign coins, but not U.S. This is something older, so we do have some coins here. Hmm, okay. There is a coin collection, legit. Legit, alright. Is that an amazing collection? I don't, I don't think so, but I don't really know. Yeah, that was one drawer. Okay, what's this? Pearls? It does look like pearls. And that looks like it could be some gold. That is gritty on the teeth. So that is, um, that is some pearls there. Oh, yes. That's some 14 karat gold right there. This is a nice little find too. 14 karat gold, if you can see it says right on that little thing right there. Can almost get it to focus there, see? Woohoo, that's good. That's a beautiful piece here. Beautiful pearl necklace with some 14 karat gold. Outstanding. Man, things are looking up. <laughs> things are looking up just a little bit, all right? Oh, oh, hang on. Cleaning unclean coins. Thank you for purchase of my uncleaned Roman coins. These coins are all authentic Roman coins that have been dug at a site near present day Greece. They will range in age from roughly 150 AD to 450 AD. Due to the location the coins are dug, there will be few, a few Greek coins. These are actually older than the Roman coins. Now the fun begins. The basic supplies that you will need are a soft bristle brush. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, just telling you what to do if you want to clean those coins. Oh, this is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Okay, that goes with those coins. Next drawer. <laughs> this is what we like. Usually, find the coin rolls, uh, wrappers, whatever, then you find the coins. Not always, not always, but sometimes. A couple of more rocks. We did find a fair amount of rocks in this lot. Okay. This is a very old swank set here. We got a couple of cufflinks and a tie clip. That's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, some ribbon. <laughs> That's that. Now let's see what's in here. Here. Oh, 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 look. <laughs> there we go. Boom. Right out the gate, we got a dollar dollar bill. But this is not just a dollar bill, this is a silver certificate. 1935. That's good. Yes. What's this? That's the lid for something. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, that's the Japanese government. What? Five pesos. That sure looks like American money. Oh, wow, look at this. There's the back side. Okay, what else we got in here? What is this? Okay, some more rocks. We're not going to spend too much time on some rocks. Maybe those are special rocks. Um, uh, those are rocks. What's this? Uh, another Japanese government bill here. One peso. I don't see any years on this. The, hmm, this right here, you know what this is? 33? That's from Club 33, that's at Disneyland, right? And uh, that's where, we, if you watched our video recently when we went to Disneyland, and we said Disney's secret club, that's Club 33. Uh, there's a couple napkins from the club there, and that's actually, uh, that's a very rare find to tell you the truth. You don't find very much stuff from Club 33. Couple of picks, and this I was hoping would be coins, but it feels like rocks, but let's see. Mm. Whoa, wait a second, what kind of rocks are those? What is this? Whoa, what is that? 
There's a whole bag of it, whatever it is. What is that green in there? Do you guys know what con this is? Do you know what that might be? Um, hmm. Let's look a little closer there. What do you think? Green. Huh. Alright, we've got a whole bag of this stuff, whatever it is. I hope that's something good. Alright, that box is a wrap, and that's a very, very cool little box. Alright, that was a good, that was good. Um, yeah, that was actually better than I thought. I like to kind of save the best for last. That was close to the last, but um, I actually thought that was going to be not that good. Okay, there's a couple of old cookbooks. Why did I save this? Why did I save this box? Maybe because the cards, we do sell cards in our live auctions. Yes, we do. And yeah, that stuff will go into the live auction. Not terribly interesting for camera. Uh, maybe there's some cards here. I'll have to go through those. I'll do that off camera. Maybe that's why I saved that. I wanted to go through it off camera. Yeah, I'll do it off camera because I know this video is getting long and uh, I don't know if it's like exactly very interesting. This, I think we did look in here. I don't know, there's a little sketchbook, cassettes. These are, uh, these are actually worth some, a little bit of money. Not a lot. Okay, a little bit more art supply stuff. Yeah, some paints. Some Rolodex. See some Star Wars. What's that? That's oh, a video game. I see a, little, a couple more video games in there. Half-Life, Doom, Collector's Edition. Might be a little value there. Picture CDs. Blank CDs, software CDs. Oh, that wasn't a very good one. <laughs> Next box. All right, this is the last box that I've got, actually. The other one I have that looks like this has the antique jars in it. We already looked at those. This one says antique irons, coasters, antique glass, flower jar. Let's see, it's pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Atlas, easy seal it says. That's nice. Oh, look, it's got the bubbles in the glass. That is, uh, that's really neat. I like that. Yes, so we got yeah, some coasters, wood coasters. <laughs> glass coasters, these almost look more like uh, candle holders. Some more coasters here. Those are a little more interesting. Huh, Hawaii. Yeah, those are a little bit neater. All right, but these right here, this is where the weight is coming from this box. Oh my, my, my. That is really heavy. So that's solid iron. It says eight. What does that mean? Is that eight pounds? Shoot, you could work out with this thing. Uh, 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 feeling the burn. Just kidding. It's like a kettlebell. Here's a seven. <laughs> is this an old days kettlebell right here? Seven. And some bigger trays. These for candles, I think. That's it. Boo! All right, well, those go in the auction for sure. Okay, let's get back in here and check this out. It's been raining. It's been raining, so... Yeah, I'm uh, probably not going to go look at those drums today. I was thinking about it, but it's right now a couple days before Christmas and raining, and I know traffic's going to be terrible getting over to my store. So, you know what we'll do? We'll take a closer look at those drums in the next episode. I know a lot of you guys have commented about that, wanting to see what those were. Uh, all right, Mill Valley Car Wash. I'm going to see if there's anything interesting in here. These are not um, architectural plans. They're landscape architectural plans. Okay, it's just to be a little bit more specific. They're for landscaping. Got some world maps here. Those are kind of neat. Probably out of an atlas book or something. As you can see, they're folded up. Yeah, I mean, this stuff's... I'm not seeing really too much very interesting stuff here. More landscape plans. More plans, huh? All right. No uh, Mona Lisa or anything hidden away in there. No Salvador Dali uh, originals. And also, you can see back there. I didn't mention it, but that yeah, the rest is empty because I brought it all in the house, and now it's all gone through. Okay, guys. Well. Okay, so we still have the drums. We have that mountain bike. The drums might have some value. All right, I know I got a lot of comments on that. Drums might have some value. I'm not very familiar with drums. That was the first drum set I had ever found. And from what I saw on them, they look pretty well used. 
So they're not gonna be like a mint condition drum set. I'm sure the guy played them for many years, maybe decades. So we're gonna wrap it there, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to think, it just feels like there's something else I need to go through, but I think we went through most of it. That locker was a dud, all right? Not a complete $8,000 loss. It was an $8,000 buy, but not an $8,000 loss. All right, I'd update you on the sales, but we really hadn't sold that much. Just Monday, we sold a bunch of stuff in the live auction. I think we sold like, I forget, close to $2,000 worth. And then we have fees for shipping and, and uh, PayPal and all that so I think we're left like 1800 bucks or something out of it so far so far 1800 and something dollars so far maybe I can update you guys later I'll go through the drums in a later video when we're at the locker maybe I'll squeeze that in so if you want to see those drums just keep watching the videos and they'll they'll pop up at some point I'm just not gonna be able to squeeze it in this one this one I know has gotten a little bit long all right because I've been editing it as I go so anyways thanks so much for watching this little adventure this is the nature of the business sometimes they're good sometimes they're bad sometimes do you expect to be good turn out bad sometimes the ones you expect to be bad turn out good it is a crazy business that's what makes it exciting that's what makes it fun that's what makes it an adventure in my opinion all right and yeah we spent eight thousand dollars and again that uh thumbnail last time really was meant to be a joke that obviously is not going to financially ruin us uh that that gamble okay but like i said in the last episode you know if you can't afford to lose eight thousand dollars don't bid eight thousand dollars right that that i do want to just say a warning to you guys that are starting out or don't have that much capital do not invest it all in a locker even if it looks like the sure thing be careful okay be careful with it the little ones the cheap ones you can make money with those sometimes those are a much safer bet and sometimes they can they can be just as much fun you don't need to find a train locker for a dollar to, to get a thrill and get a good deal and make some money right that's like a once in a lifetime locker this eight thousand dollars well, hopefully it was a once in a lifetime bust <laughs> probably not but anyways just want to say that caveat one more time don't do like locker nuts does all right Right? you know we teach you through these videos sometimes we teach you what not to do and in this case uh, don't buy eight thousand dollars on word that there's a, a coin collection inside even if you see collectibles even if you see lots of boxes the worst can come true those boxes can be full of files and books and that's what this was but at least we did have some collectibles and they were pretty good all right pretty good all right next episode i think we're going to be back at the train locker probably won't be after christmas we'll just have to see all right we'll find out together and we'll see what we find in the next episode of locker nuts until then good luck to you god bless you we'll see you next time right here on locker nuts and a merry christmas to you all all right i thought there was something i was forgetting and i forgot about this gold i was going to test it this wound up being 14k and these are 24 karat pure gold Ooh, 3.8 grams of 14k i'll show what that's worth and two grams of what is basically pure gold the nugget and the filling wow okay that's good